Hey everyone, Shadow here, and welcome to another Marvel Contest of Champions video. So in this video, we're going to be going through back issues number six, or variant six, as most of us refer to it as. Now, as with all the variants, you have a theme, a theme that gives benefits to some champions and drawbacks to others. And we're going to take a look at the theme, the global node, uh, for this variant. All right, now I chose to take the left path because I felt that it was the easiest one for my team. Okay, so you see the uh, nodes you have to deal with, but look at these globals, Black Iso Resonance, Malevolence, and Malignance. All right, so what that means uh, is that if you are not a villain champion, you're gonna have to deal with those globals. And one of the globals, will degen you and kill you. And it cannot be prevented, which means you cannot use Corvus and his immunity to bypass it. Corvus will die. It doesn't matter if he has charges or anything like that, he's just gonna die. And I know some people were concerned that once Kabam has this type of code in the game, this type of functionality, that they might start using it elsewhere. And uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. But in any case, uh, the first opponent is down. Pretty easy food for Ghost. Now, if you are not comfortable fighting Annihilus, then this path may not be for you. But he is the first one. So what you can always do is just keep going. Try. If you fail really badly, which it can go bad really quickly, then restart. It's the first fight. You only lose a little bit of energy, okay? So it's not really that bad, and I consider that path really to be the easiest one, but I know some others uh, choose different paths, and none of the paths are very, very difficult. So choose the one that fits your team the best, okay? Now, Ghost is a hashtag villain. I know some people may forget that, but when I first heard about Variant and I knew I was going to be able to use Ghost, then I was like, okay, we got this. Now, I've brought the synergy uh, with Ghost, you know, the Ghost Trinity here. Uh, I heard that it was bugged, the uh, Hood synergy specifically. I don't know if they fixed it or not. Uh, she seems to still take damage from Special 3s but I was able to phase out my recoil when I was doing this. So maybe they've already fixed it. Um, I hope they did. All right, so this fight here is a little annoying because of the glancing, okay? Uh, but it just makes the fight take a little bit longer. You just wanna bait out her special one. Uh, you don't really wanna deal with her special two. You really don't. And I got lucky and got some good uh, crits in they didn't get glanced all right, and you'll notice that I'm generally going with a one-hit style Sometimes I'll do a little bit more but generally I just do a, a one-hit style which is a way to control the power Okay, and we got her down without too much difficulty Ghost is awesome for a lot of this content so if you have ghost you are set. Now, this wasp, if you're not careful, wasp will take you out with a quickness. She is a glass cannon. She does a lot of damage very, very quickly. Now, I want you to notice that I am doing the one hit combo on her. And the reason that I'm doing that is because she can evade. And so while it was not on cooldown, I do a one hit because Ghost's medium uh, cannot be evaded as long as she has that uh, precision buff up. So one hit, one hit, and you see we were able to get Wasp down pretty quickly. So far, this path is going very, very well, about as well as I could hope. Now we're going to fight Masaki. And Ghost, she does very well against him as well. Uh, he is difficult to uh, parry, so if you're not using Ghost, you want to be careful with that. Uh, but really, there's not that much to deal with. Now, something else that I didn't mention 
earlier when we were looking at the nodes, but you have a poison that occurs every seven seconds. Now for Ghost, not a big deal. In fact, I started to time it towards the end. And look at that. I don't know what happened right there. She was just dancing in place or something. But uh, I started to time it so that once the poison hit, then I would dash back and fire off a special two because what would often happen is I'd be firing my special two off, then the poison would hit, and I'd be having all that poison done while I'm trying to get the special two finished, you know? Uh, so I learned my lesson a little bit later on, trying to time it. Now, of course, with uh, Iceman here, uh, not a big deal because she can phase off that uh, cold snap. And you see here, uh, did a lot of damage very quickly. Okay, uh, the AI is starting to play a little bit passively here. All right, and now I got to do it. Boom, special two. And it was after the poison hit, which is why I had a fury up because I phased out that poison. Uh, if you don't have ghost, you want to bring a poison immune for that path. But that was the path, just that quick and easy. Okay, now we've got to fight Rhino. And I used to farm Realm of Legends with Ghost. And I always hated fighting Rhino. Okay, so there you go. You got another look at the uh, globals that you'll have to deal with here. And keep in mind that it doesn't mean that you can't use a non-villain. Um, it just means that they are going to get wrecked pretty, pretty badly eventually, okay? So I'm going in here again with Ghost. She's done well for me so far. And I figure that I can get Rhino down at least to where I could bring in anyone else and finish him off if I can't finish him off with Ghost. That's my thinking, all right? So I went in first with Ghost and... Uh, as you can see, you have to be careful because Rhino will do that double medium and catch you. And that's what I used to hate about him. Okay, like that right there that you saw where he does that shoulder block. That has caught me I don't know how many times. All right. And something that a lot of people don't realize, but the chance for Rhino to go unblockable is in direct proportion to the size of his opponent. Smaller champions, he's gonna go unblockable more often. And larger champions, he'll go unblockable less frequently, okay? But just look at this. Now, something else you may notice. Look at her health. It's topped off. Reason being, part of the node puts a weakness on you if you stay too close. I have six. And uh, I know I've gone up to seven. So her damage is being gimped pretty badly, but she does so much damage already, it doesn't matter. And down goes Rhino, and Ghost was at full health. Okay, so Ghost obviously is an MVP for that uh, path, and really she's an MVP for much of this content. But if you don't have Ghost... Bring in a villain. You can do a search, a filter in the game for hashtag villain and choose someone who is poison immune. Now, if you don't have someone who is poison immune and you don't want to spend a lot of units, then don't do that path first. I chose that path because I felt it was um, pretty easy for Ghost. And you saw that it uh, was very, very easy for Ghost to do. But when you look through the other paths, you may find another path to be easier for your roster. So always evaluate the paths based on your roster. But I felt that this particular path, and you can tell what path Kabam considers to be the easy path, relatively speaking, uh, they will have a one-star chest on that path, usually. And so when I saw the one-star uh, path, uh, one-star chest, I knew 
that that path was considered to be the easier path. Uh, and when I looked over the opponents, I said, okay, that Annihilus was a little bit concerning, but uh, I was pretty sure that I could take him with Ghost. The thing with that is that if you mess up once, he will put a bunch of armor breaks on you. Ghost will no longer be able to phase, and it's not a good time. All right, but that's going to do it, guys. Thank you all for watching this video. Look for the next ones coming later on this week. Take care. Leave a comment. Let me know what you thought about the video. And you all have a blessed day.